Today on the New Fly Fisher, we are dealing with post cold front conditions. Smallmouth bass is the species of choice on the Adelic Saugeen River. Joined by Rob Heal from Grindstone Angling, we will learn about some of the techniques and options anglers have available for turning tough days into success. Stay with us. Today we are fishing on the Saugeen River, which is approximately two hours northwest of Toronto in the province of Ontario. The Saugeen runs through the pretty little town of Paisley, which has numerous excellent B&Bs for anglers. I had fished the Saugeen with John Block earlier, and had returned with Rob Heal to again try the great smallmouth fishing, but conditions had changed dramatically. Several storms had passed through the area just before we arrived, and now we were dealing with post-cold front conditions. In fact, the weather continued to change throughout the day. This is when anglers have to put on their thinking caps and assess how they can put as many factors in their favor as possible. Rob and I had our work cut out for us, but we welcomed the challenge. Well, Colin, the water's down to about 19 degrees, which is probably uh, three degrees colder in the past three days, so we're gonna start subsurface today rather than work the poppers. Okay, so I got the one rod rigged with a popper. This one I've got a sinking, sinking line tip. with a stream rule. That yeah. work? Yeah, that'll that'll do the trick. Okay, so this, we'll, is, this is part of the adaptability you were talking about. You gotta be flexible to the conditions, right? That's right. With, with the water temperatures uh, dropping like they are and, and dropping dramatically, uh, the fish are gonna be uh, a little more lethargic than they've been the last uh, couple of weeks. Uh, we've had a lot of warm weather, but just over the past three days, the temperature just plummeted. So uh, that's affecting the surface temperature and that in turn is going to affect the fish. So uh, we'll go deep uh, for the first couple hours until uh, the sun hits the river and then we'll, uh, we'll try poppers in Sounds the afternoon. Good. Let's go. All right. Cold fronts are the bane of any angler. After they have passed, they cause fish to suddenly become inactive and dormant. A cold front actually takes place a day or so before the drop in temperature sets in and skies become blue. A cold front typically shows itself in the form of high winds, rainy weather, or thunderstorms. Post cold front conditions vary greatly from the actual cold front. Clear blue skies, calm winds, and colder temperatures are the norm. The change in barometric pressure and temperature seems to shut down the fish, causing them to retreat to heavier cover, sulk on the bottom, and become extremely inactive. It's a big fish. Is it a big fish? Yeah, it feels like it. Good, good, good. Well, and over this way, it's bulldogging like one. This is a seven weight rod, and it's making it work. Well, it was a. Uh, oh, yeah. It was a good hit. Yeah, he really slammed it, didn't he? Let me get my line in the boat here. I don't, even put this, I don't think I have to put this guy in labor. Oh, oh yeah, that is a nice, nice fish. big Holy smallmouth. Fish. Yeah, that, that's a nice that's fish. That's a beauty. Okay, so I'm going to reverse it. So, how do you recommend I fight? Big fish like this. Well, at this point, you want to get them, try and get them out from under the boat. They, yeah. These fish are, um, for whatever reason, they do like to get into the boat, uh, into the shadow. Yeah. But um, keeping the fish off balance, when he goes one way, you want to move the rod in the opposite direction. And slow, right? And slowly, yeah. You don't want to, uh, you know, in, in, when you're fighting fish, I, th I like to tell guys, every movement that you make should be slow and methodical. The more twitching, the more jerking, the more noisy the movements are, the, the more chance you have of introducing slack. And these are barbless hooks, so they will pop out. Yeah. And you want to avoid that. So every movement that you make when you're fighting fish should be slow and methodical. Okay. He's really dug and staying down yeah. there, isn't he? Yeah, no, this is, they're That's not jumping. Nice but it's probably the cool temperatures. Yeah, not oh, jumping absolutely. Yet, eh? Yeah. As Look I at said, this fish. What it's earlier, doing to a seven-way rod. 
That water this temperature is, is down about bass. three degrees. Okay, you ready? Yeah. I think I got them up. Oh, 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 that's a nice fish. Nice fish. Nice fish. Look at that, eh? Oh yeah. Look at look at the colors, oh, yeah. the stripes on him. The camera. That's a good wow. fish. Actually, uh, bought a little, bought a little bigger than he is, but. Uh, What's that one about? Two and a half, fish. three pounds. About two and a half pounds. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. First well fish of the day. Yeah. What a take, that. Oh, oh I love poppers. That is so much fun. One of the advantages of uh, fishing in a river like this is you can quite often use the current to put the fly where you want it. In a situation like this, it's a back eddy, but we're using the current to drag the fly into the, uh, into the structure. And if you were fishing with the, with the uh, current, and I can show you that downstream, you'll use the downstream current to move the fly into the structure that you want to fish. You see, you don't have to be deadly accurate with your cast if you're using the current. There you go. Oh, nice fish. Did he jump on that? Nice Holy fish. Holy mackerel. He went right straight up and down on top of it. <laughs> you knew there had to be a fish in there. I got to get us off this because okay. I think there's a lot of debris in here. So I'm going to push yeah, the I'm boat actually getting my line caught up, out. So I'm getting them away. Get that line cleared. Okay. Just try, try and keep him up there, Colin, because I, there is a lot of woody uh, debris in here. That's it. That's it. It's not a super big fish, I don't think, you know, based on what I saw when he jumped. Uh, I don't but know. He's I... strong. <laughs> not, <laughs> he's I'm making gonna, a seven uh, weight work. I'm that. not going to say he's a slouch at this point. <laughs> How could anybody not like catching small? Oh, man. On Especially top. like that. Oh, that's, that's, wow. That's, that's just special. Oh, he's oh, a little bigger than nice I thought. Fish. That's a nice fish. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop the anchor because and that current's gonna move us around. Okay. It looks like he really took it because he must have come down and with his mouth right on top of it. So I got a nice hook set. Wow. That's deep. <laughs> Holy cow. That's fun. I gotta tell you. Guess I'm not going to drop the anchor. <laughs> That's 30 feet right there. Look at him. He's just dogging right down. And pulling line. This is a strong fish. It's a big fish, too. You got a fighting butt in the seven weight. You get it on the reel. Wow, that's some hole. Whew. Okay, I'm trying to bring him up now. Okay, you got the net ready? I think he's ready. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. Is he coming? Yeah, he's coming. Bring him over the side. Right in the top Perfect. of the mouth. See him? Yep. <laughs> nice fish. <laughs> nice fish. Look at that thing. Just popped right out, eh? Here. Look at that. You got him? Go ahead. Yeah. That's Look a beauty. That. that is a beauty. All muscle. That is. <laughs> Let's get him back in. Yeah, that's a gorgeous fish. You knew, you knew there had to be a fish along that bank. I'm all slime, but I don't too care, much. man. All right. <laughs> There's no, just we had too to work much. that a lot yeah. to make it, you know, to find that I'm fish in the spots. I'm get something Yeah, higher. but you know, it's maybe there's something, uh, atmospheric pressure or something that's putting them slightly off. But boy, when they're hitting, there's no mistaking it, is there? Yeah, they're, uh, well, let's get another fish. one, man. All right. What are your options if you're dealing with post-cold front conditions? There are a couple of strategies any angler can do to help put things in their favor. The first is to downsize your flies. If you're casting large topwater flies, then change to smaller ones. We want to offer fish something small and seemingly tasty, something they cannot resist. Just a small bite, like a mint after a large meal. You may be full, but you just can't resist. Downsizing works, triggering inactive fish to take your offering. The second option is to slow down your retrieves. 
With the fish being so dormant, they are less likely to chase food, so you have to put the fly on their nose and let it stay in their kill zone as long as possible. It has been my experience that experimenting with the trees throughout the day will help you find the right presentation for the conditions. Oh, you got him, you got, I got him. him. I got him out. He's oh. out. Oh. Nicely done. Whoa, I thought I was Nicely gonna lose him done. on that wood. He was right beside that wood, wasn't he? Oh yeah, he was. And for a second there, he got the yeah, he tip it around just about, it. Just to get in there. Okay. That's a nice fish. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah. Let's get rid of this. No, I don't think this one's as big as that one I just lost, but this one's still nice. And they're really, it's funny, what time is it now? Like four o'clock-ish? It's uh, 10 to five. 10 to five, they're just turning on again. Okay, here, I'm gonna turn this guy this way. And then turn him this way. That's it. Okay, I think he's ready. He's using the current here. He's got it in there. Pretty good. That's an impressive fight though, eh? That's a Oh, these are so strong. Run. Yeah, he's a nice fish. Nice, nice, nice. Look at the color on him. Oh, oh look at the one behind him. Look at the one behind him. It's huge. Look underneath him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I Look at the him, size I just of saw him. him turn. He's huge. He's right underneath him. Yeah. Oh, it's a wondering, big fish. I'm wondering what the heck's going on. Okay. Uh, nice. Nice fish. Nice fish. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. That's nice, eh? Yes, yeah, sir. Let go of my thumb. Go away. Well, all yeah, right. That's good. Way to go. Thanks. Yeah, I'm starting to see a little more action now. At least that's uh, that was like three hours of real slow. The Saugeen River is a rich system offering a diverse array of food items for bass. Favorite prey include crayfish frogs, baitfish, terrestrials such as grasshoppers, and a variety of aquatic invertebrates. As opportunistic predators, small ones like to hold close to the bank, waiting for hapless grasshoppers to blow into the river. Today, we used a variety of hopper patterns, trying to entice a strike from inactive fish. So now we're putting the hopper up against the bank here. We've changed tactics because we've been using the the uh, frog pattern, but we've had nothing. We've seen bass come up underneath it, but mm -hmm. they're not taking it. Mm -hmm. It's now about mid-afternoon. It's clouded over. Conditions have changed. So why are we changing, and how are we adapting to this? Uh, well, a couple reasons for changing to the hopper is we've got this grassy bank here to our left, and it goes down and extends down for another hundred yards. Um, this deep bank is going to hold fish. We know the fish are here, but they just haven't been uh, receptive to what we've been using. So I figured a, uh, a more subtle, uh, slower approach, something a little more natural, might just bring them up. So what, you're, uh, what I have you doing is just chucking that uh, as close to the bank as you can, and then just little short twitches back towards the boat and off the, uh, the overhanging, uh, or the, the undercut bank there. Now the reason why is because there's lots of grasshoppers up there in the grass. Is there that is, right? yeah. I happened to notice yesterday for the first time um, while I was downriver at another drift, there was a lot of grasshoppers in the grass. We were walking along a bank at one point and uh, it was just thick with them. So I think that the fish will, will get used to see them, seeing them at a certain point. The wind will knock them down into the uh, river and it, again, it's just another type of uh, forage for them. Okay, oh, so what happened there? You told me to put it near the log. I was about four feet short, and it was incredible. I wish the camera had been rolling, because I pop, 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 and they came, three fish came three screaming them. them. 
Oh. And I think it's interesting when oh, to, to, iron, this guy's to note that when, when those fish came out, there was no one of them was going to eat that that popper come hell or high water. Okay, that was really impressive. Get away from the anchor. Okay, got him. That's a big. That's a nice fish. Yeah, it is. I didn't think it was that big when I first saw him because there was a bigger one and he outraced the bigger one to the fly. Come back. There you go. Wow, this water's so gin clear. And that was only like a foot and a half of water. There's three of them tucked underneath that log. Unreal. And they're all good sized fish. They're, uh, Okay. They're tough, aren't they? Oh man, he's really working this rod. Okay, I'm bringing his head. Okay, I'm gonna bring his head up now. Okay. okay. I think he's ready. Heads up, heads up, heads up. There you go. Oh. <laughs> now we've had to work hard today. Oh. But look at that fish. Hang on, eh? Just hang on to that. Yeah, I got it. Go ahead. That's a nice fish. Just support him there. That's oh. a good fish. Okay. Show the camera. That fish, look at that. There was three of them like that. Yeah. That that was that was impressive. All three of them came out of there. Thanks. <laughs> My pleasure. That was worth. That the, was exciting. Uh, that was worth the trip right there. Yeah. Now that's again the versatility. We've been trying. Well, we tried hoppers. We tried streamers, crayfish patterns, and I just put this frog pattern back on, and it was working. It. And we've seen fish, but. Because the uh, we've had a pressure system come in, it's it's now very humid. It's putting the fish down, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, big it, time. It has to be compared to this morning when the we were seeing fish everywhere. The weather's changed dramatically. It hasn't gotten any colder, but the uh, the humidity is definitely up over the last three hours, and the fish have just they've just flattened. Just so shut down. the key is adapting, being yeah. versatile to the conditions, experimenting with different things. Mm -hmm. Don't stick to what you were, you know, what is tried and true. Right, or Be what was yesterday. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So try different things. I mean, as you're saying at that one spot, we should have tried a halgamite and, you know, dead drifted yep. it through there, just yep. basically nymphing. You know what I mean? If that's what it takes to, to start hooking into fish. And in that case, I mean, that was just the right structure, foot and a half of water, mm -hmm. right fly. Oh, oh, oh. That's a good fish. Oh, nice fish, nice fish. Oh, ho, ho. Yeah. I didn't have to set the hook, he said it. You had your head turned, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I actually did oh, have. Oh, nice fish. Oh, no, no, get away from the wood. Oh. Oh, oh, oh away from the rock, away from the rock. Oh, look at that. That's oh. why we bass fish, Colin. <laughs> Did he hammer that too? There's no question about that fish. Oh. That's why we bass fish. I'll tell you, this is the way to end the day too. What a beautiful spot. Well, oh, don't make this downriver. He's using the current. Okay. He's still using the current, he's going the other way. Yeah, it's great. Up, though. Oh, that's a nice fish. Oh, yeah. That's a big And he's he ever that's strong. Oh, he's really making this rod work. See just, a rock just, there. There's yeah, no just come up. Just come up to the right with him. Okay. Slowly, but yeah, that's it. Just get him off that. Get him off that rock. Oh. <laughs> Look <laughs> at that. that. Wonderful fish. I was just yeah, about to say to you. Oh, look at the pig. But say maybe we should change flies and. Obviously, that was a mistake. To think that it was just. You know, there's tough conditions, eh? Yeah, I know. It's been like this all day. It's uh... And we've changed and we've adapted and we've played with a lot of things. And you've given me great advice, Rob. Oh, look at this. Look at this. 
Okay, I think he's almost ready. He's got to get his head up. Okay, here he comes. Look, he's got it in there. He's so big, he can't barely jump anymore. Okay, bringing him in. That is a beautiful fish. Look at that. Head up. A little more, a little more. There we go. Oh. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Just grab him there. Oh. What oh. an absolutely extraordinary fish. Look at that. <laughs> That's um, beautiful. What a day. Yeah. And you know something? We caught fish even though conditions were tough. Yep. Let's get this guy in. Yep. I don't like to I don't like to stress these fish at all. Get them in their cradle. Oh. What a beautiful fish. He's ready. There he goes. Way to go, Colm. <sighs> Way to go. That's fantastic. Rob, thank you. Um, I appreciate you teaching me everything about having versatility for smallmouth fishing. I mean, this is just like trout fishing. You have to adapt conditions. Mm -hmm. Things were tough. We tried streamers, hoppers, crayfish patterns, yep. different patterns on top. Slowly, quickly. Everything. And we got fish. I don't know, we get four or five, lost another two or three yep. before the camera rolled. Yeah. All big fish. All big fish. What can I say? If you get a chance, come and see Rob here at Grindstone Angling. You have an adventure of a lifetime. If you like catching big smallmouth like I do, and if you're a trout fisherman and you haven't tried smallmouth, give this a try. You'll love it. From all of us here at the New Fly Fisherman, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week.